This is World Heavyweight Championship of the World stuff. In the red corner, you have arrived. Their ADS team have created one of the fastest racing AIs on the planet. In the blue corner, you've got Lucas Degrassi, ex Formula One, Formula E world champion, three times on the podium at Le Mans. He's proven fast in whatever you put him in. But this is a clash of the titans, make no mistake. Launching in three, two, one. So the Lucas Challenge has been in progress now for a number of years. My understanding of how the Lucas Challenge uh, came about was actually a bet. A bet between Dennis, the owner of the company, and Lucas about whether or not he could create a racing AI that was faster than Lucas out on track. Hi, my name is Max Kumskoy. I'm a product lead of autonomous driving team at Arrival. RoboRace's role in this development is to provide the framework which allows us to develop and test autonomous driving algorithms, but also to make it fun with the competition and the challenge. Arrival is developing a full-stack uh, autonomous driving system. We want our vehicle to be fully independent from any infrastructure, HD maps or GPS. You can say that it drives more like a human. Hi, I'm Pavel. I'm a motion control lead in autonomous driving department here in Arrival. Motion control tries to predict the car behavior and tries to match the trajectory by applying the steering or braking or throttling. The core of this project is around safety. And when you see these cars operating at the limit, it, it's a very short hop to understand how they're going to make our lives safer in the future. The Lucas Challenge started with the arrival team taking on Ryan Turk, who's a drifter. The two of them went head to head about four or five years ago. But our technology was far from being competitive and we didn't show really good results. A few years after that, we decided to take it seriously. What was just a fun bet now turned into a massive development of vehicle stabilization algorithms for autonomous cars. My name is Joseph Birkin. I run the ADS implementation team in Arrival. The AI hardware is the eyes and ears of the software. The software needs inputs in order to make decisions, in order to find the limit of the vehicle. The cameras, the radars, the lidars, they all add inputs to the software, which the software can then make decisions against. In order to drive, you still need to solve two high-level problems. First, you need to define your path, your trajectory, how you want to go. And the second thing is you need to execute this trajectory, so you need to drive exactly where you want to drive. I'm Christophoros Hatzikomis, and I'm a control engineer for the motion control team in Arrival. From when the autonomous driving software has decided the path that it wants to follow, the motion control software uh, should take care uh, the actuator inputs like the steering and the throttle that's required of the brakes to follow that path precisely, both in terms of uh, position uh, and speed. We continue pushing, we continue adding more and more features to eventually be not only quicker, but also smarter than the human behind the steering wheel. They've come back together a few times, most notably at Qua in France. That's when uh, the first proper Lucas Challenge took place.
When we went to Lecroix, our challenge is simple as possible to set the faster time than Lucas de Grassi. You could feel the fact that the team behind the ADS really got their head down because they could sense that the win was in sight. I think the year the team has a the big chance of uh, performing really well. I hope still I can still beat it, but like deeply I want the team to, to be very, very fast. It took us eight laps until we ran out of battery and every lap we were increasing and increasing the speed. We're here to benchmark our algorithms. We need to know how good they are. And Lucas provides us with very difficult challenge. The most important thing that we learned in France is that our car does not arrive at the limits as fast as it should be. We decided to be more predictable, we decided to be more elegant in terms of controlling the vehicle. One of the most famous human versus AI competitions uh, was Garry Kasparov, the chess champion, versus Deep Blue. In 1997, Deep Blue, which was an IBM supercomputer, absolutely decimated him playing chess. Deep Blue uh, was hand-coded, which is not too dissimilar to how the racing AIs are being made at the moment. So for me, I'm more interested in Alpha Zero. That was a chess AI that taught itself just by practicing over and over and over again. Alpha Zero uh, started to approach the game of chess in ways that blew the experts away. I mean, just dazzling stuff that the human players would never even dare to consider. And I feel like that's the juncture that we're at right now. What's really fascinating is what comes next. If you follow the Deep Blue Alpha Zero journey, how long before these racing AIs are teaching themselves from scratch just through practicing over and over? And then if that's the case, how long before one of them does something in a race environment that no racing driver would ever dream or dare to do? And that is really exciting. At Bedford, our main challenge was to set faster lap time. What we're looking at is a continuation of the human versus machine challenge we've been doing with Lucas Degrassi. This is an opportunity for AI to compare to one of the most professional race drivers we have. I'm fascinated to see what the results are going to be. We were very much looking forward into the race day because we were believing that it was really our chance to beat Lucas. First of all, I have 25 years of experience, while the AI have only like two or three years, so that's a bit unfair. Um, and, uh, but we are both controlling the car in the same fashion, so you have only uh, access to steering, throttle, brake, and you have to combine these three inputs to create the best lap time around the track. At the day of the race, I felt really excited. Lucas will go out, we give him a full discharge of the battery, so he'll get eight or nine laps and then we'll do the same with the software driver. Everything was working nicely. The software was at the top of the performance, so the day started with really positive. So I was really excited on race day. I had been there the day before when the weather was dry, and I'd seen the ADS doing laps, and it was fast. I mean, really, really fast. Threshold breaking down into the turns, you know, just at the point of locking up, and quick along the straights. And I must admit, as a car guy, I stood at the side of the track and went, Lucas is gonna to have to bring his A game if he's gonna beat his ABS tomorrow. Launching in three, two, and one. I had a lot of fun out there. 
The problem is that there are patches of dry and wet. So some corners, the, the, the optimal line is where it's a little bit more dry. I think now he, he has found the limit uh, for this condition. I hope we can do something uh, at least as good. Launching in three, two, one. conditions were changing dramatically even between just two laps we've now got about 35 minutes left we've got another cloud that's just come over and trying to find the same weather conditions for Lucas and the AI has been really difficult and now it starts to rain again so how can it's very hard to compare now. Fifteen. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. I've never seen it correct like that before. Racing line is one of the most important things in racing. Looking at how Lucas was driving in wet conditions, we have seen that he was much safer in terms of selecting the exact trajectory. If we take a look at turn one, he was trying to use non-optimal way to avoid puddles. Autonomous system is not. When you calculate your racing line, you have to have late apexes to achieve the highest speeds after the current, because there is a straight line. You have to take into account lots of vehicle parameters, lots of dynamic variables. When Lucas was driving through the chicane, he was driving through the curbs, which autonomous system cannot do in terms of failure of the sensors. We have to be smart, stable and optimal. I was really proud of the team and I was proud that they they did not give up, they they continued pushing. After the race at Bedford, I felt motivated. We no longer want just to beat human, we want to be smarter than human. This is so important, this is so breakthrough from arrival from RoboRace. In a couple of years, the, the world will look, look back at what we're doing today as something that pushed this technology that eventually will change a little bit the world for a better, safer place in the future. You see your code coming alive and actually driving the vehicle, that really motivates you going forward and pushing harder. It's the chance to make change, real change, is really going to make a difference to how how the world works. We hope that nearly all our software uh, will actually be used on the road in arrival vehicles. We're teaching the car how to drive better than a human, better by being safer, by being predictable, uh, by being reliable. I really love what I do. I'm developing cutting-edge technologies which will be used widely in the future transportation. Writing the software for a racing car to compete with a professional racing driver, you could say probably it's every boy's dream. So when the racing ADS beats Lucas, which will happen because you can't stand in the way of progress, it's inevitable. When that moment happens, the world will pivot ever so slightly. It's a bit like shooting a target that's a mile away. A one millimeter difference at the point of firing can be a 10 meter difference down at the target. And I feel like that's the sort of shockwave that I anticipate will happen after the Lucas Challenge has played out. It'll only be when we look back, uh, we'll realize just how much change we've created. And that's really the core of making history. At the next race, will machine beat man?
the machine will beat the human? Absolutely. He's gonna lose. The fight is still on and it's all to play for.